not the, one of the least exciting James Brown tracks you could have selected. That's a bit different, though. That's rubbish. Oh, don't start. You want to hear, get up, bar. Did 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 at the end, he was going, I'm gone, yeah. I'm gone. I, I was thinking that might be the cape moment. Have you ever seen him live? Yeah, that's the no. cape moment. With the cape on, I tell you, it's an inspirational moment. Is it? It's a, I, I'm going to steal it. <laughs> You'll see me before the year is out, my friends, wearing a cape on television. <laughs> Obviously, that will surprise no one. <laughs> I don't know why I'm delivering that as if it's a revelatory uh, moment. pants over your trousers. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Alan Davis, that's the voice you're hearing next to me right now. Alan Davis, <laughs> star of, uh, now, star of um, the television screen, star of the live arena when performing comedy, but now also star of the London stage, because Alan is in uh, his award-winning show. Is there one he awards you? Uh, not yet. Uh, the uh, show, an, an excellent show, which did <laughs> yeah. very well at Edinburgh, of course. Yes. Auntie and Me. Auntie and Me. And, called, and it's a kind of a sort of a, a farce, I believe, in, it, in the tradition of Oops, it's My Wife. very much a black comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hide in the cupboard at any stage? The landlord of the pub next to the theatre, he calls it Me and Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> which I prefer. Well, You're in that Me and Auntie, aren't you? <laughs> you can see, that's grammatically incorrect. As he well doesn't as being... do that accent, though, because he's Turkish. But if I started to do a Turkish accent, you'd get oh, complaints. You'd get the UN coming. Oh, Investigating. Um, the play is called Auntie Me. You didn't write it, though, did you? No, Morris Panitch, Canadian writer. Okay. Who, I believe, wrote The X-Files sometimes as well. He was in The X-Files. Was he? He played a really psychotic lunatic who walked down the corridor firing at Mulder. I don't remember that. It was brilliant. It and was... I was quite excited to meet him because of that, because he's done 50 years of theatre and finds yeah. that all a bit tiresome. Yeah, talking about The X-Files. Yeah. But it's funny, that's the sort yeah, of thing you that does mind that, Morris. Yeah. Tell me about The X-Files. Did you, you meet Gillian <laughs> <laughs> um, And But the play is doing well, though, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, we're doing well, yeah. And it's you've had some great reviews. I've had some reviews. And we were all, it's all normal theatre stuff. Finally, and, uh, I'm beginning to accept you can act. Yeah. <laughs> Let's face it, we all saw you in Jonathan. We saw you in Jonathan Creek. That right. wasn't really acting. That's was on it? next week. Can I say that? It's coming back. I'm so excited. Next Saturday night on the 1st of March. I cannot wait. New, I'll be... brand new episode. I'm dusting off my Jonathan Creek <laughs> dance as we speak. <laughs> I cannot wait to see the new series. We've got three new episodes on three the next three Saturdays. OK, and how many in the series? Uh, well, there's... Three more, but we haven't shot them yet. So there'll be six in the series. Six. They're, they're quite labour intensive, I guess, aren't they? They are. They take, it takes eight weeks to shoot three. And they're written by what's the name of that guy again? David Renwick. He's quite lazy. <laughs> he spends. <laughs> he could be writing more. He, he said to me that he can't actually write anything until his forehead starts bleeding onto the typewriter. I find, he's so dramatic. I find him irritating on that level because I want more <laughs> Jonathan Creek. He's not writing enough for me and he's making this big song and dance, but it, it can't be hard. We all know how Jonathan Creek goes. Something happens, <laughs> you're called in, something else happens, you, uh, no one else can solve it, something happens, you solve it. <laughs> how hard can it actually be to write that? See, the three key elements there are the something happens, yeah, but. You can get a man in to help. Get, man get in. that bloke and he wrote the X Files. Yeah. <laughs> Maurice? It's a great show, though, isn't it? Yes, it is a great show. It must be fun. Even to... though I'm in it myself, yeah. I'm prepared to say it's, it's a great a, show. It's a great show. Are you still wearing the duffel? The duffel is still functioning. What are the plans for the duffel when the show's over? Is there a Showbiz Hall of Fame it goes to? I'm hoping for some bids being made. You should sell on eBay. See, the first series, I wore my own duffel. Hmm. I've still got that. No one's interested. They don't, they don't want no, that duffel? No one's interested. But the, then we got a new duffel because there was an episode where I got savaged by Jack Russell. Oh. For those of you who haven't seen the show, this is the kind of thing that goes on. That's, that's a, <laughs> and that's a, that's a really high dramatic point, that would yeah. be. <laughs> and then uh, so they said, we better get double, better get double. And I've had the same duffel now for six years. Jackie's so trivia. You see, I think... You should experiment with the clothing more. I would like to see you wearing a cape, a cape. on the show. Yeah, you see? Well, if I run, and I do run at one point in this episode, the duffel does flow out behind me. And is there a lining involved, like there's, a silver lining? There's a, no, there's a kind of a murky grey lining. But it does have a cape effect, and there is a hood that can also add to the cape effect. I, I could see you in a gold parka, a gold duffel. Yeah. With um, with epaulets like a Michael Jackson kind well, of thing. if I ever got invited to something like, to say, the Brit Awards or something yeah. like that, then I'd get a gold one. Let's let's <laughs> get you a showbiz Jonathan Creek outfit, mate. To go out. A lame, some gold, some leather. Yeah. You know, and get the hair a ridiculously long hair extension for you. Yeah, really curly long. hair down to the floor. But it could also be coloured hair, couldn't it? Coloured. Um, curly bits. There is life in the series, yeah. Yeah. And now uh, this bloke who writes it, what's his name again? David Renwick. Yeah. He irritates me. He's at home now. <laughs> He's writing these notes down, saying that's that's the, one of the somethings. <laughs> that's it. That's one of the somethings. <laughs> <laughs> it's as easy as that. Don't make a happens. fuss about it. Brackets. He gold makes a fuss about poker. writing. He wrote that other thing as well and didn't write enough of them. What the one foot in the yeah, grave? Yeah, should have written more of them. 
How hard can that be? Grumpy bloke, something he happens. He always quotes me. The he argues to his wife, something happens. First ever review he got for One Foot in the Grave before it won 28 BAFTAs and got 28 million viewers. Yeah. Someone wrote in the paper, kick the other foot in. <laughs> <laughs> that's all he remembers. After all the success. It, is, it still hurts. <laughs> it still hurts. He is one of the best writers in the country, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> Let's talk about Auntie and Me then. This is on at the Wyndham Theatre in London. Yes. This is Alan's current project. You can go and see him performing live. I have heard really good things about it, genuinely. It's just very, very amusing in a very dark and sick and black comedy type way. Uh, it's Auntie and Me, it's called. There is an auntie on stage with you as well, I believe. Yeah, it's two-hander. Okay. It's about a guy who goes to visit his aunt, who he hasn't seen for 30 years, and he's a bit grumpy all round, bit dysfunctional family life. You find out all about what happened to his mum and dad and what they did to him. And he kind of rails at her for 95 minutes. Then something happens, there's a big laugh, and then there's a bit more, and then it ends. Does she do anything? She has six lines. Now that sounds to me... See, that's the sort of job I'm looking for. She gets to eat, she has sweets. (laughs) This is a great gig. She has a little whiskey in the second half. Wow! And I'm just talking and talking. It's a miracle I'm not sounding like a frog at the moment. I'm very croaky in the morning because I'm the whole shouting show. all night. Alan, look, you, you, this could be like art. You know they kept putting different celebrities in art. Wait, yeah. If you want a new auntie, give me the first uh, call, well, would you? I think you'd be great. I could be the auntie. It's a proper job, though. It's hard work. I could sit there. You could be the auntie? Actually, yeah. You want to be the auntie? Yes, I want the six lines. <laughs> 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 we give you the wig. Start small and then yeah. go big. Yeah, yeah, go big. I, I don't want to carry a big roll. I think they're, one, they're asking people now if they, if to extend it after yeah. I've been carried off to theatre heaven. Well, I'll be the auntie. So you'll be the auntie. Who, should, who would you like talking opposite you? If you? Imagine if you're lying in bed for an hour and a half, who do you want talking to you? I've got just a person. If you say Christina Aguilera, I'll be disappointed. Dale Winton. Dale Winton. <laughs> me and Dale are double-hander. <laughs> Auntie and me. I can see some sort of comet relief event happening. <laughs> <laughs> you come up the end in a oh, silver parka. Relief, maybe. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, <laughs> Alan <laughs> Davis, no. <laughs> Was there any need for that? No. As Kevin Day used to say, always finish, even in practice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you see, there were children listening and their parents are saying, well, I understood the Jonathan Creek stuff. What's he talking about there? <laughs> yeah, they're going to have to explain like your well, children. Well, we get complaints. I thought that hand gesture with the two fingers at the side up, isn't that the horns of the devil? Well, I think that's why rock and roll of subverting said, no, it means rock on. No, well, they well, don't know what they're talking about. Well, that, you know, <laughs> they're I mean... Satan worshipping and they think they're just waving at Axl Rose. <laughs> Well, is that not a similar thing? Well, yeah. <laughs> I was in a lift once it. with Axel Rose. It's no accident. I made that connection, is it? Axel, very small fellow, wearing a bandana. Is he? Yeah, and he didn't look. He didn't look very happy. He was stuck in the lift with me. We were in the lift in New York, and he had a bounce with him. And I said, oh, "I know you're you're that bloke from the thing." <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't remember the name of the bloody band, and he thought I was taking well, the Mickey, and I wasn't. That happens to you. Don't I you? love it. I welcome it. Well, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You're that bloke from that and thing then, with and then the I said, I said, and McCoy. My little brother really <laughs> likes your music, and I think I made it worse. <laughs> He was pressing the button, trying to get it started <laughs> on the phone. Has he got big biceps, Axel Rose? No, not that I noticed. I did hear a story about him, though. What's that? Well, I knew someone who did the on-tour catering for Guns N' Roses. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently, uh, he insisted on having Brown Windsor soup available. <laughs> did he? Almost permanently throughout the tour. That but he also had one man whose job it was, was during the drum solo, he'd run off, and there was a man whose job it was to dry his private area down with a hairdryer. He'd get very sweaty on stage, he'd blow dry the area. <laughs> what, he'd open, he'd unzip no, his flies? No, he wouldn't unzip, he'd just do the surface, because the pants would get so wet, the trousers he'd be wearing, because they're very tight, of course, being a rock star. They'd get very wet, there'd be an unsightly sweat stain, he'd Is come that... off there and the bloke would be on his knees, that was his job on tour. <laughs> sure, that wasn't Drying the... Axel Rose's privates with a head right? If he spilt brown Windsor soup on it. That was obviously wouldn't help, matters. <laughs> What was the guy's name? Slash, wasn't it? Yeah. Slash. In the Slash. band? He's the uh, guitarist in the band, and, yeah. and uh, David Bowie had a liaison with Slash's mum years ago, and David used to tuck little baby Slash into bed. Really? <laughs> Did he go to bed with his little baby guitar? And his little baby top hat on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and in his little baby bottle, Brown wins a suit. Brown wins a suit. <laughs> how neatly we brought that together. <laughs> See how that works? Let's play another track. We're talking to Alan Davis. Feeder, they're a great band. They are a great band, uh, Feeder, with uh, Spangle on lead vocals. I can't remember the rest of them, but they're a great band. That's a great single. You were tapping your toes to that, Alan. I like that one. They're great, aren't well, they? They say just the way I'm feeling or just the way I'm feeding. Just the way I'm feeling. Oh, that's important difference. But it'll soon turn up on a commercial, no doubt, for Rusks or something, with yeah. children saying just the way I'm with feeding. the baby mouthing it. Just the way I'm feeding. I don't like it when they make babies talking adverts. Don't you? I, know, I only like it when babies actually talk. <laughs> 
when they actually do it. I prefer that to making them talk, pretend talk. Yeah, I don't like it when they make their lips move in a kind of computer-generated way. It, it unsettles me. If the baby had said, whoa, 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 you're doing 70 in the cone zone... Can you imagine? <laughs> ..you'd have paid attention. Was I wrong to carry on fast in the cone zone, do you think? Well, they, they, you no. Know. I mean, there's a reason for it. I understand I broke the law and the law won. OK, I'm a bit of a rebel, I'm a bit of a renegade. You know me, I take risks. Y- yeah. I pushed it too far <laughs> that time. <laughs> I got done for speeding when I was 21 and I was in the court and they said he was doing between 106 and 108 miles an hour. Wow. And I said, that'll be 107 then. <laughs> <laughs> they gave you extra points for that. I'd like you to know I've done that joke on every radio <laughs> network in the country. <laughs> but you see, I'm, what's unusual is I'm someone who doesn't actually like driving fast and I don't drive fast. You know, when Which, I go... Were you in the if I go carrier. above, like, 70, yeah, I get panicky. So normally I don't. And occasionally I look down the channel going 80, go, oh, I'm doing 80, and I slow down immediately, because I don't... <laughs> that's it, the photo I want to see. I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> you, looking, you looking panicky, go, oh, I, I'll confess, I'm I, once, 80. I once went up to 100 miles an hour in a car. Did you? And I had to pull over and rest for half an hour after, because I was sweating so much. <laughs> it wasn't a nice... I did 100 no miles an hour in a motorbike once. Wow. And I tried to turn my head to change lanes, and I couldn't actually get it back <laughs> facing <laughs> forwards. Well, but you see, so you're crazy. Down. Going that fast on a motorbike is just crazy. It's dangerous and reckless, and I haven't done it since. Have you seen that motorbike they bought out, which is like two motorbikes joined together. No, there's a, a I think Chrysler in America You've bought been out reading those comic. Books they bought no, they bought out a double motorbike and it appears to have four wheels. And I felt like saying, but that's a car. That's a car. <laughs> yeah, it's so big, it's got like four you wheels, know, but they're still calling it a motorbike. You know, they did that movie of Judge Dredd. Yes, which is really awful. I didn't mind it. Oh, I thought it was. Well, you like the comic. Yeah, it's rubbish, but it's fun. But you know those big motorbikes they ride about. Mm. Well, in the comics they zoom around and then and they've got rockets and guns in them, haven't they? And radios yeah. and they fly. Fantastic. Well, they made them in the film. They couldn't ride them. No one could ride. They could only go five miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you watch the film. They have to cut just as they're pulling up. They have, have, a, <laughs> have trainer wheels on the back to keep them up. Because <laughs> you, you you've got quite a beaten up old bike. I've, well, no, it's just I've had it a long time. But whenever I've seen it, I've always thought well, you should buy a new bike. Yeah, I find really. it a bit disappointing. It's like an old dirty bike you've got. I love it though. It's a trials bike, isn't it? Big trials bike, yeah. And do you do, you do the trialsing on it, whatever they no. call that, the trials riding? No, I did once come up on the verge outside your house. <laughs> you wouldn't ever consider getting an American bike like a Harley Davidson. Oh, for goodness sake. A Harley Davidson. you calling me a homosexual? Is it not acknowledged in the world of biking that they're for homosexuals? Of course it is. Or, no. for, or for DJs? They're for homosexuals or DJs. <laughs> 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 You're doing yourself a disservice. No, I'm not. I love it. He likes his bike, I like mine. It's ridiculous. You I've been up race. on the verge at your house as well. He came around my house wearing it, the children thought a parade had pulled into the <laughs> I say grounds, it's like as I've got ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a driveway at the front. You know, it's off-road, it's quite smart. Said, Daddy, Daddy, he's turning us. <laughs> Daddy, there's a clown outside. He pulls up his high. I'll get a nice clean bike next time I pop over. Yeah, wash it. Yeah. Or consider a scooter. No, 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 no. Um, you, uh, Alan Davis <laughs> is a football enthusiast. He supports the Premier Football, uh, Premier League football team, the Arsenal. That's very good. Arsenal <laughs> United. Is it Arsenal United or anything like that? No, just Arsenal? Just plain Arsenal. Arsenal FC. Arsenal FC. Arsenal FC. Now, Arsenal FC, I'm led to believe, are doing very well they at the moment. They were founded in the, the Woolwich Arsenal. Mm. And when was that? 1886. Wow, that's an old, uh, old mm. club. And, and uh, in the current series of Jonathan Creek, we actually filmed some scenes at the Woolwich Arsenal. And that must have excited you, now. I was a little bit excited. You're died in the wool Arsenal fan. Yeah. And the Arsenal t- club are doing very well in the FA Cup league. They're in the quarter-final against Chelsea. And they beat the Manchester and United. get this right, uh, my matinee of Auntie and Me takes place at six o'clock on a Saturday, specifically what? because I said I'm not doing a matinee at three <laughs> if Arsenal are playing at home. That is And now pathetic. they've moved the quarter-final to be covered live on BBC One to 5.15. I won't be able to go. Oh, you see. Lineker, are you listening? Can't you do the play with the little earpiece in, like listening to it on the radio? <laughs> yeah. Now you're talking. Why don't we have, every now and then, Granny send you a code. If she's knitting, if well, she look, taps twice, you're one up. <laughs> I'm, in the fl- I'm in the room with her in the bed. There's no reason at all why she couldn't have a little portable. Why couldn't she be an Arsenal fan? She could have a portable telly. <laughs> Had a line saying, I'm here with Auntie. She's such an Arsenal fan. She won't even turn, it off. She won't even turn the TV off when I'm here. I would say to her, What's the score, Auntie? <laughs> she I'm talking just, about life in she general. Can hold but fingers up. Aren't she? 1 0, 1 1. We're joking, but I suspect you probably will do this. Come along on the 8th of March for that performance. This might excite you. On Thursday night, I was spending some time with a man called Tony Adams. Oh, yeah. There is only one, I believe. Yeah, there is only one. Um, he's a very nice chap. He is lovely, isn't he? Very nice fellow. I did a speech thing at a dinner do for him and he was very nice 
I did some jokes about him. He didn't seem to mind. He doesn't seem to mind at all. He told me that he'd met you. Didn't like you. Said you were very unkind. <laughs> said if ever sees you again, well, it's going to start at you. I was on the Kumars at Forty Two, the hit uh, BBC Two oh, show. Yeah. He was another guest on it. I'll tell you what I like on. I mean, I like Sanjeev. He's a lovely bloke and everything. But I think Mira Sayal's bloody hilarious. She's fantastic that. on that. Hilarious. She's fantastic. Sanjeev's rubbish on it. <laughs> he's really they winging it. his show, it's no he's good winging at all. It, He's winging it, He's a one-hit wonder. He looks wonder. across at her, say something funny. He's only on TV because <laughs> he's an Indian. <laughs> we all know that. I think you should take that back, it's racist. <laughs> no, Mira's on because she's talented. <laughs> he's only, all he's got to play is the race card, that's clear. <laughs> he's not at all, that's not fair on Sanjeev, you're being I unfair. I am joking of him. Oh, now you're joking. Yeah. He knows me well enough to know I'm joking. <laughs> I was only joking when I was doing 69 on the M2 last week. <laughs> 69 is a great number to get caught doing, though, isn't it? If you're going to get caught speeding, get, let it be 69. <laughs> 169. Then I'd say, you know what i got points for? Being adventurous on the motorway. you going to say prizes. <laughs> <laughs> points mean prizes. So the Arsenal uh, team mm. are about to play, who did you say again, Manchester City? We play Man City today at three. And the, will you, presumably you'll win I that match. Uh, well... Hope so. Okay. It is on their ground, mind. And then who who else stands between you and FA Cup glory? Well, then we play Chelsea. Mm-hmm. In the now that would be an exciting match for London because they're both London teams. London Derby, very difficult game. Right. They're very good, Chelsea. Mm. And then uh, they maybe wear blue, a semi-final don't they? after that. They wear blue. And you wear red. And we wear red. So it's going to look pretty as well. I might tune yeah. in for that. The red and the blue on the green is going to look it's lovely. It's going to look lovely. Yeah, see, that's the way I approach the game. Yeah. If it's aesthetically pleasing, I don't mind it. It will be that one. It's when you see people wearing all white. You think, what's that? That's not that good. And they've always got football. They've got game they dream cast on their chest. And they look and like. ridiculous. Um, and then the finals will be against who? Well, we don't know who's going to get there yet. Oh, I see, of course. But I tell you, it won't be. Manchester United. <laughs> yeah, no, you must be thrilled that you knocked them out. <laughs> well, it was a good game, you know, and we played well. And, and they you played were... on their territory, didn't you? What do you call it? On their... On their pitch. Pitch. On their ground. Home match for them. And then afterwards, the manager, their manager started attacking his own team. It sounds like a, an animal. <laughs> Well, the, surely he should be penalised for that kind of behaviour. It should be. We, we, we had us in stitches at Ibrio. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! You see what I did there? I take it back. Sanjeev is a great comedian. <laughs> um, so you're excited about the way Arsenal are going right now? I'm enjoying the Arsenal. Here's what I don't really understand about football fans. Okay. So you do really well this year. Yeah. Next year you might not. I know, well, that's what happened last year. They won the league and the cup. Okay. We thought, is there, can we not have next year off? So when does it get to a point where you go, OK, I'm giving up now, really. We've had a few good years, a few bad years. I'm not going to be bothered anymore. I'm not going to invest any of myself. I don't actually know. I can't tell you why I am bothered. Because you're very excited, aren't you? I love it. It matters to you. But when I go, I don't think about anything else except that. That's quite a nice thing to have. So you enter a zen-like zone. Yeah. You enter a phase where nothing it's else, not you, everything else falls away. you're watching one of your kung fu laser discs. Yeah. Everything melts away, doesn't it? I only get that at the two other times in my life. When, what's that? One is when I'm playing tennis. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I don't do. think about anything but... There are moments where I enter only a stage of... logo Blinding in white intensity where if I don't defeat Ricky Gervais, I know I will suffer. <laughs> <laughs> you want to watch him? And the other time we boxer. can't talk about on a family show. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it involves Dale. <laughs> It's He's a, an Arsenal supporter. It, yeah, you say that. He is. He's not really. He, is he a goes along. He likes the communal bath afterwards. <laughs> Dale Winton is a gooner. He's not the gooner. He's the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Dale, and Clive Anderson. Oh, that's up. And Roy McGrath. Rory. He's a big fan. He's a gooner. Is that it? I, as far as I know. It's not a good turnout, is it? <laughs> That's a decidedly B-list it's 80s really, gathering. It's basically all of us are on the slide. You want to get some young blood in there. I want to see if Will Young can come along and support myself. Will Young, are you a gooner? <laughs> okay. Gareth Gates might be one. Um, let's play another track. We're talking to Alan Davis. Run out of time. What? What? This will be the last track. How did that happen? You right? came in like at half past. Yeah, he's been on for ages. But the conversation but, yeah. has flowed like a fine wine. It has. And now it's over. I now we must know. put we the cork back in the bottle and save it for another week. a bit there on the football, I thought. Yeah, you weren't pulling your side of the conversation that much, I must admit. I'm sorry about that. I was giving you lots of good stuff. He wasn't banging it back. Yeah. You know why? <laughs> he's saving himself for his matinee at the Wyndham Theatre here in London. We're going to sit on Chancellor's oh, Road at 6pm. Now, you might want to go along for that and shout out the score. And if you want to put Alan off, <laughs> shout out, they're down 2 0. <laughs> <laughs> See how he fends for himself with that. Because theatre people like that, don't they? They like you to cough, to shout yeah. out, to join in. 
Yeah. Alan's the only one in the West End who insists you do take flash photographs during the performance. <laughs> it being a monologue, he likes his concentration and being you, challenged. You've got one of those digital cameras, I want you to come up on the stage and show me the image. <laughs> <laughs> Just before receiving a call on your annoyingly personalised mobile. <laughs> da-la, 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 With da-la. The Jonathan Creek theme. Oh, that would be good. Um, so, do we have time for another track? Yeah, we're going to play the new single from The White Stripes. Bung this on, it's and then we'll, on vinyl. we'll say goodbye. Oh, I love a bit of vinyl. Well, we don't have time for all that track. It's a great single, isn't it? Let's play it next week. That's okay. a new one from The White Stripes. They're going to be coming on the show in a few weeks' time. Thanks to all my guests today. We had Christian O'Connell on. We had Maloko and, of course, Alan Davis. I like Thank that you, Alan. song. They're playing the Brixton Academy on the 11th of April. It's a great track, isn't it? Yes. We'll go and see them. Uh, thank you for listening. Please join us again next week if you can. 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC.